Hi, this is Gordon with Maximum PC Magazine. We're still looking at a lineup of the coolest bricks and NUC computers. For people who don't know, these are miniature machines with desktop power, or at least laptop in some of these. This is, of course, Intel's brand new NUC, and I kid you not, D54250W, as in whiskey, Y as in Yankee, K as in Kilo. Yeah, that really just rolls off the tongue. Intel definitely has a naming problem with these babies. That uh, name isn't great, but this unit is a pretty nifty device. This basically is a miniature computer. I'm going to walk you through the outside. Two USB 3s. There's actually an infrared port behind here. Headphone, audio out. Analog, Kensington lock port. Two ports for the fan. Ethernet, two, two USB 3s. Um, this mini display port, as well as mini HDMI. And on our unit, it's actually this milled out uh, they actually had to mill out this little bit of aluminum. These were early press samples. Apparently, uh, some of the H mini HDMI cables would not uh, stick in there unless they milled out that. So the retail units actually do have that uh, milled out as well. The uh, What else do I need to say? Oh, so this unit has an i5 processor in it, which means it's a dual core. It's, an, it's a mobile i5. It's a dual core. It's hyper-threaded, and it'll clock up to a pretty good clock. I think uh, it's 1.3 base clock, and I believe it'll clock up to, gosh, a low twos, which makes it um, definitely faster than this original Core i3 Ivory Bridge, uh, which you can see here. It's actually even smaller, too. Let's take a look inside this baby. I actually unscrewed this before, but it's not easy getting in here. I will say one nice thing about Intel. Hold on. I will say one nice thing about Intel is uh, over the Gigabyte is the screws stay in the base, so you can't lose them. Although, frankly, you're only going to take it off once, so it's not a problem. This base is also plastic, although there is some uh, metal here, probably for uh, EM issues. But this is a, it's a bottom. The base is plastic. Frankly, who cares? Oh, and there's still memory in here. I guess I gotta pull it up before we send it back. Inside you will see, of course, standard DDR3 low voltage slots. There's two of them. Let me get this out of here. Okay, wait. There we go. If you don't know how to do this, we actually showed you how to build your own nook. You can look at that video, but I will show you here. You put the memory in at a slight angle. Normally you would use both thumbs push it in until the edge connector is kind of disappeared and then bend it down. Sometimes people think you just jam it straight in there. That's how, how it works. Let me see if I can get this with one hand. This is the M SATA drive and Wi-Fi. I believe Intel sells these units without the Wi-Fi card. This is an 802.11ac with integrated Bluetooth. The Bluetooth antennas are actually integrated inside of the unit. I mean the Wi-Fi antennas if I said Bluetooth. But to build it you would buy this at Amazon or Newegg or whatever retail you buy it at. Put in your memory. Please do run two pieces of memory. If you are running only one piece of RAM you will be running in single channel mode. That's going to hurt your performance. Add your Wi-Fi card, 30 bucks. Add your MSAT of whatever size you want. Screw the bottom back on, plug in your power supply. Install your OS and you're ready to go. As far as performance goes, this is the, oh, this is the i5 again. It's about, this is a Core i3 Haswell, this is a Core i5 Haswell. Again, the main difference is you're getting turbo boost out of this. This one you're not getting turbo boost out of. It makes a pretty good difference. Maybe in some of the workloads I ran, 20, 30% difference. That's pretty significant uh, if you think about it. But you know, honestly, it really depends on what you're gonna do. If you're gonna buy one of these, tuck it under your TV, you know, an i3 is actually perfectly fine. Even an i for bridge actually is perfectly fine. Haswell's nice because you are getting more performance. This uh, against the, against the this i3 Iver bridge, which it you know does not turbo boost again. I was looking at you know 30% performance, and you know clock to clock, 
This I3 Haswell, no turbo boost, I3 Ivory Bridge, they're pretty much a wash. Definitely a little faster, Haswell is faster than Ivory Bridge, but for the most part, it's, it's kind of a wash. Let's get back to this unit. So inside, you will see these two interesting ports, a standard SATA port and a power port. And you're probably wondering why exactly you need those. Well, the reason is Intel has taken this unit this motherboard exact, to be exact, and put it inside this unit, which is, uh, I don't quite know the full model number, but I will give you part of it. It is the NUC D54250 Whiskey Yankee Kilo, W-Y-K, yeah. And I think there's a U on there to tell you it's a little bit taller. The reason it's taller, let's see if we can get this base back on. The reason it's taller, because Intel decided they wanted people to be able to run hard drives. And I, I don't think that's really because they want it for, for performance, they want it for cost. Uh, did I, here we go. I'm gonna pull the base off of this U unit. I think they just kind of wanted to drive the price down a little bit, a little bit for people who don't want to buy uh, MSATA drives, so you could actually draw, use a standard larger capacity SSD, or you could, in this case, use a hard drive. This is a Seagate two terabyte momentous. It's a standard 9.5 millimeter, millimeter, uh, millimeter laptop hard drive, which I've got in here. And you can actually put a one terabyte SSD in this unit if you want to. So you can actually get up to three terabytes in something that's basically smaller than a, a Wendy's Baconator. And I'm not kidding, it's actually smaller than a Wendy's Baconator, I believe. It's a little tough getting this out of here. The Gigabyte uh, Bricks Pro actually the tray comes right out, you add your drive. This one you gotta be a little careful. You rotate it out, and you'll see power and SATA going to the same motherboard. Inside, of course, I have some G-Skill memory. I have an M-SATA drive, and it has an 802.11 AC inside. The G-Skill memory, this, it's two uh, eight gig sodiums. They're clocked at 1866, but I've had problems on this NUC Running it at 1866 speeds, it may be simply a problem with the BIOS UEFI, or maybe Haswell doesn't really like, at least the part in here doesn't like to run 1866 modules. So I manually clocked them back to 1600, it's fine. And again, as we said earlier, if you're gonna run in this, you wanna run two modules. If you run single, uh, one module, you're only gonna get single channel RAM. That's, that's really gonna cut down your bandwidth, which is used for your integrated graphics. Um, as far as gaming goes, both of these are equipped with HD 5000 graphics, which it's okay. It's not great. I was able to play Counter-Strike Source, a 10 year old game at least, at about 80 frames a second online. And the benchmark itself in Counter-Strike Source was set about 60. I also did try Minecraft, and in Minecraft, HD 5000 graphics with these processors um, and 1600 RAM. I was getting maybe 40, 45 frames a second at 1080p, which isn't bad. So obviously, moderate gaming, it'll work. It's not gonna be optimal. I would not buy one of these if I really want a gaming box. You need um, a real graphic card, or frankly, it'd be really cool if we saw one of these with a Kavari, um, probably in this size, because you can get it a lot smaller. So a Kavari in one of these would actually be a fairly decent low-end gaming box. Definitely has more pep than HT5000. That's pretty much everything. Oh, we didn't go over all the ports on the sexy D54250WYKU. Pretty much the same. You're getting mini display port, which actually does work uh, with a 4K monitor. It's a one point, it's a full on uh, uh, 1.2 compliant port. I tested it on 4K panel. Uh, HDMI 1.4A, Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3s, two USB 3s, SPDIF, and a Kensington lock inside so nobody can steal it easily. Pretty neat. Uh, obviously, the fast one is this baby back here, Bricks Pro. There's another video on that as well as a Bricks projector. And hopefully, more videos later on Maximum PC. Talk to you later.